Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you all? I hope that all of you are in best of your health. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he safeguard and protect you all. May he bless you all with health and comfort. May he protect you all from every disease, sedition and any harmful thing. May he bless your time and life with the barakah. May he bless us to amass the special rahmah and barakah of this month. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ability and willingness that he has bestowed upon us, we will be initiating Dorai Quran with Surah Fatiha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this listening session of yours. May he bless you with the greatest reward and may he bless you with best of sincerity and steadfastness in this journey of 30 Jews. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, through the means of the Quran, lead us to Siratul Mustaqim, straight path. That is the path that will take us to paradise. Siratul Mustaqim is the straight path, right? That which will lead us to paradise, inshallah, that which will take us to our destination. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he let us die in the state of Iman and give us the strength and willingness and ability that we are able to give the Quran its due right, that we are able to plead forgiveness for our sins, and we are able to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us in this month of Ramadan. We will be initiating from Suratul Fatiha. This is the first Makki Surah of the Quran, and it is the fifth in the chronology of Revelation. The meaning of Fatiha is to begin, to open, to initiate. Actually, the Quran begins with this surah. The Quran is beginning with this surah, right? It's also called Al-Miftah, the meaning of which is the surah which opens. Alhamdulillah, we are also opening that door of our lives which will lead us to Surat Mustaqim, the path leading us to paradise with this surah. And inshallah, the door will open in Jannatul Firdaus. Inshallah, in this journey of the Quran, we will learn many things and we will try our best to act upon them as we learn them, Inshallah. What happens after some time? We may forget many things. Then what should be done? You can make a note of all the things that you want to act upon or any good word that you like in a notebook or a register. How would that benefit us? Of course, it will be a remembrance and to act upon will become easy. We might Remember those acts which we have forgotten to act upon and also to convey this to others will become easy and you will gain the reward for writing also. It is said that on the day of Qiyamah the blood of martyrs will be weighed. Just like that the ink of a scholar will also be weighed. Even a dot will have its weight. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wish that a dot might have uncountable reward. Its reward might be equivalent to the weight of the Mount Uhad. And also, when we want to repeat Dora Quran, then it will be easier for us, inshallah. There is a concise summary of the whole Quran in Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha has many names. Number one, Ummul Quran, the mother of the Quran. He وسلم, has said that it is above all the surahs of the Quran. Number two, As Salat, Namaz. This surah is recited in every rakah of the prayer and if it is not recited then the prayer is not accepted that is why it is also known as as salat number three as saba al masani in surah hijr ayah number 87 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated that وَلَقَدْ عَتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِي وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ and indeed, we have bestowed upon you seven of the Masani and the Grand Quran. Number four, Ash-Shifa, meaning you can read this and blow on yourself. Number five, Al-Kafiya. Number six, Umm Al-Kutab. Number seven, Al-Kans, the treasure. Number eight, Al-Ruqiya. There is a mention in Hadith that he وسلم, said that there are two lights that have been bestowed only upon me and upon none other. Number one, Surah Fatiha. And number two, the last two ayat of Surah Baqarah. This surah is the epitome of the entire Quran and dua is accepted after reciting this surah. 
the surah has a beautiful introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the relation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his slave is also described in a beautiful way and dua of the slave is also mentioned here in this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the six disciplines mentioned in the Quran the six disciplines are number one tawheed belief in oneness of God number two risalat prophethood Number three, belief in the hereafter. Number four, ahkamat, commandments. Number five, the fate of the believers. Number six, the fate of the disbelievers. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in the Quran in Surah Nahl. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتِ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So when you recite the Quran, seek refuge with Allah from Shaitan, the outcast. This is from the etiquettes of reciting the Quran. Inshallah, whenever we initiate the recitation of the Quran, we must do so by reciting Ta'uz first. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has himself taught us this etiquette of reciting the Quran in the Quran itself. This etiquette of recitation of the Quran is in Surah Naml, ayah number 30. Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Verily, it is from Sulaiman and it reads in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Even we must start our work with this recitation of Bismillah. Because of this, there will be barka in our work and it will become easy. Every surah starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You might have noticed that Tasmiyah is not a part of the surah. When we start a surah, the recitation of Ta'awuz and Tasmiyah both is compulsory. But if a person stops in the middle and then resumes the recitation after some time, then reciting Ta'uz would suffice. Tasmiya may or may not be recited. Only in Surah Fatiha, the Tasmiya is counted as the first verse, first ayat. The second ayat is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of all that exists. This ayat has the introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Fatiha's first three ayat consists of a beautiful introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise and all thanks is for Allah. Allah who is the Lord of all that exists. He is the nourisher of everyone. There are many secrets that are hidden in this ayat. The Quran is initiated with Alhamdulillah, just like this when we will go to paradise, what would be the first thing that the dwellers of paradise would say? They would say, Alhamdulillah. Only those who had accepted the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their way of life, only they will be the ones who could say, Alhamdulillah. They were the ones who always said, Alhamdulillah. Even in their greatest trial, they would say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Who can do this? To say Alhamdulillah under any circumstances can be done only by those who have understood the very identity and recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That my Lord has created me. He is my master, my creator, my nourisher. He has created all the bounties of this universe for me. He caters to my every need. He not only takes care of my physical needs but also my spiritual needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not left us in this world after creating us. He has taken care of our guidance, has sent down his messengers, has sent down the books in every era. Alhamdulillah, he has sent down the last of the messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as a mercy for all of us. Revealed the Quran, has made the way to guidance easy for us. But then, why does not everyone walk on the path of guidance? The way to guidance is opened for those, only those are guided, those who have passion, those who have desire, those who try and 
those who have understood the very identity and recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have understood the majesty, the supreme power and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is beyond description. Then that person starts pursuing the ways in which he can get close to and make his Lord accept him. How he can become his Lord's favorite, how to persuade his Lord. The second hidden secret of this ayah is that all my gratitude should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me his countless blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my creator, master, nourisher and looks after my every need. In remembering these blessings and accepting it with all your heart will one be to feel the emotions of gratitude. Then one is able to utter Alhamdulillah. Then if he's faced with any difficulty, trials, disease, what would he say? Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Oh Allah, we are accepting your will. Even if by the way of trials, you want to raise our positions, want to purify us. If you are getting us ready for a huge bountiful deed, may he reward us for our patience. When our hearts are filled with the remembrance and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our tongues will always glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our thoughts will always have his contemplation. Then we will get close to Lord, to the Lord of the worlds, inshallah. The third secret is that when we say Alhamdulillah, then we are expressing that we are accepting Allah's decisions. That we are accepting the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will happen when we accept the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We gain proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is happy with us. The person's heart will be at peace and rest. He will be peaceful. Gratitude will enter his heart. And then with all his heart, he will say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise and thanks is for Allah alone, who is the master of all that exists. The second, or rather the third ayat is, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the most, merci the always merciful. This ayah also has the introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The common and regular mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are also mentioned here. The common and regular mercies are those which are for each and every person. He may be a Muslim, a Kafir or a priest of Zoroastrian religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing risk to everyone, is taking care of all their needs. Because of this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the entire universe is in order. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides according to our hard work and effort. It is another thing that those who are not Muslims are trying for this world and are being rewarded with this world. And the Muslim, the various moments are trying to get accepted their work by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman has this attribute. Example, rain. It falls on everyone and falls heavily at times. It does not see if the person is righteous, mu'min, disbeliever, disobedient, subservient. It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the sinners are not accounted for immediately. He is giving them time. Ar-Rahim is the most merciful. This has the special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is continuous and persistent. This special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is linked with the day of judgment. Only because of this, the people of Iman, Mu'min, will be forgiven on that day. They will be under the special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A beautiful hadith from Bukhari, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that Prophet sallallahu has said, there are 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one less than 100. The one who memorizes them is from the people of paradise. Therefore, to memorize them and recite them daily will take us to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with this ability and willingness. Ameen. Maliki yawmiddin, the owner of the day of recompense. This ayat also has the introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on the day of judgment, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the owner, the king, the authority over everything and every decision will be with him. The day of Qiyamah will be very harsh and will be as long as 50,000 years. Justice cannot be truly done in this world. 
That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do justice on that day. On that day, the decision of rewards and punishments will be in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone will be given their due right by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some will receive glad tidings of paradise, while some will be crushed with the news of hell. Yom Middin is one of the names of Qiyamah. A deen means to pay back, the day of payback. On that day, everyone will be paid back for what they have done in this world. If one has oppressed someone, he will be paid back for that. What is this world? It's Darul Amal, place of doing, and Qiyamah is the place of payback. There we will get our recompense. If we have done good, we will be rewarded, inshallah. And if we have oppressed, sinned, or have done injustice, then we will be punished. We must ponder that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the day of Qiyamah, the day of rewards and punishment, and on that day all the decisions will be in His hands, then why do people run after this world and leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This world will be of no use there. If in this world we offend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make everyone else happy, instead of bowing before Allah, we bow before others. Instead of asking help from Allah, we ask from others, go to the graves of people and ask help from the dead or sometimes ask help while bowing before a peer. We should stop and ponder. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, He is our creator, provides us with rizq, our nourisher, our master, our administrator. Allah is the one who has written our fates. Even on the day of Qiyamah, the decisions of our fate will be written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the owner of the day of recompense. Then why don't we put our complete trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why do we trust people? What we are supposed to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why do we ask from people? Our children are given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rizq is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet we keep asking these things from people. In Bukhari, Book of Tafsir, it is written that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the earth under control and a sky will be twirled around his left hand. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will state that I am the king. Where are the kings of the earth? Where are the arrogant ones? These three opening ayats, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Manik Yawm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been introduced in a very beautiful way. And the sleeping conscience of mankind has been awakened. It is being said, when will you wake after your eyes are permanently closed? It will be too late then. You have been given a chance to wake up now. This world is the place of doing. Prepare right now. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the harm of the day of losses. Ameen. The next ayat is, You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. In this ayat of Surah Fatiha, the relation between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his slave is being introduced in a very beautiful way. When the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has understood the identity of Allah, then he starts pursuing the ways to make this enigmatic personality be accepting of him. What can be done so that my master accepts me? I can gain proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moment slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will understand that to attain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, he will have to act upon the Quran and Sunnah. Therefore, he starts to learn them so that he may know the virtuous actions that can be done to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept him. Then he gets to know that to gain proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to worship one Allah. Along with the voluntary acts of worship, he has to make sure he does the involuntary acts of worship. So he starts doing them. Then he gets to know that to gain proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to ask help from the one, Allah, and none other. This is how he gets to belong to one Allah. Therefore, it is said, O Allah, you alone we ask for help. Why? Because we worship you alone. And when a mu'min slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iyaka na'bud, O Allah, you alone we worship, then leaves everyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He now does not bow before the people of the graves. 
He neither bows before them nor does he ask them to give him a child or provision nor is he obedient towards them. He neither bows before others nor does he have any expectations of them. And neither does he want false compliments nor flattery. He now worships one Allah. He does so with humility, with love and honor, with longing and passion. He now relishes the obedience and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a beautiful hadith Qudsi which states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sta- stated that he has divided the prayer between him and his slave. Half of it is for me and the other is for my slave. In it is for my slave what he desires for. If he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, then he says that my slave has praised me. And when the slave says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, he then says, my slave has said praising words about me. When the slave says, Maliki Yom Din, he then says, my slave has mentioned my superiority. And when the slave says, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een, then he says, this is shared between me and my slave. My slave gets what he asks for. Then the slaves recite the whole surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is for my slave. And when my slave asks me for something, then it is for him. Now many of you might be thinking that should we ask nothing from the slaves of Allah? The answer to this is the things which can be given by none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Example, children, rizq, health. Then we should ask only our master for them. If we ask them from the slaves of Allah, then that will attribute to shirk. We should ask the slaves of Allah only those that which they are capable of giving. Example, water, food. And when one is ill, then they must go to the doctor because doctor or hakim, they are just a means of getting cured. But the curer is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we have been cured, we should not say, had it not been for that doctor, we would have died. No, because life and death are only in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The companions of Prophet وسلم, would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. Even if they had broken a shoelace, they would turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a beautiful dua to be recited every morning and evening. Allahumma la mani'a lama a'atayta wa la mu'tiya lima mana'ta wa la yanfa'u dhal jaddi min kal jaddu O oh Allah, no one can hold back what you give and no one can give what you hold back and no one's riches can benefit them against you A hadith from Muslim narrated Ibn Abbas uh, anhu, the meaning of iya kanabudu O oh, our master we specially accept the oneness of yours and we fear you alone and you alone do we expect from. None other than you do we worship or fear or expect anything. And from that we are obedient to you alone and in all our work we ask your help alone. Therefore, we should worship Allah alone with humility and whatever small or big the act might be, we should ask help only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability and willingness to do so. Amen. The sixth ayat is Ihdinas surat al-mustaqeem Guide us to the straight path. This is the dua of the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which he himself has taught us has asked us to repeatedly ask for in every prayer. In answer to this prayer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the entire Quran. In the Quran, he has shown us the types of people and by giving different examples, he has shown that these are kafir, disbelievers, these are munafiq or hypocrites, this is their identification and these are their traits, therefore do not follow their path. These are mumin or believers, these are muttaqi or God-fearing or pious, whatever they do, you can follow them. Here it is being said that he has shown us that we should be cautious of what the consequences might be. It is great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that by giving the examples of people, He has shown us saying, look here, these were the different traits of people, these were their flaws, their vices, be careful of them or else you will have the same consequences. And look, these were those who had iman and were pious, these were the virtuous deeds they used to do, you follow in their footsteps so that you may have the same good end as theirs. In the next ayat, there is a brief description of the three groups. 
Whereas in Surah Baqarah, Mu'minins or believers, Kafirs or disbelievers and Munafiks or hypocrites, identification has been explained in detail with examples. Guidance is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is zealous and provides for everyone. But this favor which is far greater than any other favors, the favor of guidance is given only to those who have longing and desire for it deep in their hearts. And who else knows what is in the hearts except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gives guidance only to those who want to take it. Therefore we must also look at our hearts to see if we have the desire to attain guidance, longing, yearning and effort for it. If not, then we should develop it. The seventh and the last ayat of Surah Fatiha is Surat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين The way of those upon whom you have bestowed your favor, not that of those who earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. In the sixth ayat it was, Guide us to the straight path. And now the dua is extended. Guide us on the path of those whom you have favored. That is, whom you have accepted and who are entitled of your favor. Meaning, the prophets, the truthful, the martyrs and the virtuous. Because if we follow their path, act as they did, then inshallah ours will be the same end as theirs. Inshallah we will also receive favors like them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who earn your anger are the Jews. And those who went astray are the Christians who have gone astray and have wandered away proclaimed Isa as the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their hearts were wrapped with the love of Prophet Isa as they had gone so far that they committed this shirk in the first three ayat of Surah Fatiha there was a beautiful introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those three ayat were Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Manik Yomidin. In these three ayat, monotheism and oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is mentioned. These ayat create the longing of meeting Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The fifth ayat has the journey kit. Iya ka na abudu wa iya ka nastain. You we worship and you we ask for help. It is being said here that during the difficult stages of our journey, O Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we will ask only your help. Because for a successful journey, the way should also be proper and correct. And also for a successful journey, a leader who can guide is also necessary. Therefore, the slave made the dua, O oh Allah, guide us onto the path of the favored people. Surat al ladina an'amta alayhim For the successful journey, we have to avoid thieves and robbers also. We have to avoid criminals also. Therefore, dua was made. غَيْلِ الْمَقْضُوبِ alayhim wala at last, we say Ameen. In Hadith, we have whosoever's Ameen coincides with that of the angels, then he is forgiven. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes it easy for us to walk on the path of guidance. May he make us steadfast on this journey of 30 Jews. Through this journey of the Raya Quran, may he share his special mercies and prosperity upon us. May he accept your listening of the Raya Quran. Through this assembly of ours, may he forgive all our flaws, shortcomings, mistakes and all the sins from our past. May he bless us with his identity and understanding so that we may worship him alone, not associate partners with him, only him we please. Because to please one Allah is easy compared to his slaves. What would be the benefit of this? We will be successful in the hereafter also, inshallah. And oh Allah, we ask you alone for help. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He lets us not be dependent on anyone. May He make us independent of them. Our next surah is Surah Baqarah. In Surah Baqarah, detailed description of those three groups is given, that which has been talked about in Surah Fatiha. In Surah Fatiha, there is a concise mention of all the rulings, whereas in Surah Baqarah, those same rulings will be explained in detail. In Surah Fatiha, we made a dua for guidance. Whereas in Surah Baqarah, the acceptance of our dua is being declared. Surah Baqarah is the longest Madani or revealed in Madina Surah of the Quran. 
it has 286 ayat and 40 ruku. In Arabic, Bakara means cow. This surah will have an account of the cow. This is the reason why its name is Bakara. In Tirmidhi, Abu Huraira anhu narrates that Muhammad wasallam said that everything has a peak, a protrusion, just like the protrusion of a camel. The peak of the Quran is Surah Bakara. And in this is one ayah which is the leader of all the ayats of the Quran and that is Ayatul Kursi. In Muslim, Abu Amama Ruziallahu anhu, anhu narrates that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "O people, recite Quran as it would come as an intercessor for its reciter on the day of judgment." Especially as Zawarain, the two illuminated and lustrous surahs of the Quran, which are Surah Baqarah and Surah Ali Imran, because on the day of Qiyamah, these two surahs will come as two shades, or as two clouds, or as two flocks of birds, and will argue in favor of their reciters will intercede. Just like here is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, recite Surah Al-Baqarah as there is blessing in reciting it and there is grief in leaving it. False forces cannot compete with it, that is witchcraft, evil, jinnad cannot withstand it and the sorcerers cannot defeat it. We must make an effort to learn it by heart and must recite it with all care. It has many benefits in it. Surah Baqarah is divided into two parts according to its subject. In the first part, there are 18 ruku and these become 151 ayat. There is mention of Jews and their rectification in the first Jews. Up till 141 ayat, this topic is continued. When the second part starts in second Jews, then we will talk about it then. In the first two ruku of Surah Baqarah, there are 20 ayat. In Medina, when he وسلم, invited people towards Islam, then three types of people came to light, making three different groups. The first group consisted of the believers, the truthful, the pious and God-fearing. They are being talked about in the first five ayat and their examples are Abu Bakr Siddiq, Umar Farooq, the next group is about those who did not believe, that is disbelievers. They are mentioned in the ayat 6 and 7. Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab are the examples of this group. The third group consists of hypocrites who are mentioned from ayat 8 to ayat 20 and this group was formed later which will be talked about. The example of this group is Abdullah bin Ubay. We will talk about who are the hypocrites, meaning they are two-faced they will falsely testify that they have believed but they do not believe from their hearts. All these groups will be mentioned in the beginning to Ruku of the Surah. Their identity will be shown, their traits, their indication, their qualities will be talked about inshallah. And we will also see that what will happen to these three groups in this world and in the hereafter. Let's initiate Surah Al-Baqarah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alif Lam Mim. These are huruf muqatta'at or disjoint letters, secret letters. The word muqatta'at comes from qatta, meaning to disjoin, meaning they are read separately. There is no narration on what do they mean. The meaning of these letters are known only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Sunan Tirmizi, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has said, I am not saying that Alif Lam Mim is one letter, but Alif is a single letter. Lam is a single letter and Mim is a single letter, total three, right? And every letter has ten blessings on it. With these, uh, this hadith, we get to understand that just like Alif, Lam, Mim, if we recite the entire Quran without knowing its meaning, because these three do not have any meaning, we will get the reward. Because Quran is a book of Khair and Barka. We will be rewarded. But why has the Quran been revealed? So that we may act upon it. So to act upon it, Translation, understanding, this Dora Quran are necessary. It is the book of actions and it is voluntary that we attain this knowledge. May Allah give us ability and a willingness to act upon it and may He make us among those who spread it to others. Ameen. This is the book of Allah and there is no doubt in it. 
ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه this has two meanings one is that it is the claim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is his book and the original of it is in lohe mahfuz this is that book which I made mention about in Torah, Bible and Palms this is its first meaning that it is the claim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second meaning is that what all the stories and whatever the rulings are there stories told, advices given glad tidings and warnings given signs mentioned prophecy is mentioned each and everything is the truth and all this is true what is the claim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if there is any mistake in it then show it prove it you might have seen that at the back of all the books of this world it is written that if any mistake has been done please tell us about it so that we may rectify it in our next edition but Allah's book is absolutely flawless this ayat Dalikal kitabu la rayba fi is the proof of the fact that this book is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one else can claim this. Hudal lil muttaqeen guidance for the muttaqeen meaning for the God fearing pious those who fear Allah. From here we can understand that guidance from the Quran is attained only by those who have faith in their hearts belief fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way to paradise becomes easy for them through the Quran. Those who believe that this is from Allah, this is the order from my master, I have to act upon it. When I act accordingly, only then will I get deliverance. And this firm faith and belief can only be of a muttaqi or a pious God-fearing. Taqwa is the love and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an emotion that develops belief in the hearts. Then you will know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there, hereafter is there, everyone has to die, death is inevitable. But then we will be resurrected and questioned about. He will now believe that there is paradise, hell. The emotion or the feeling of taqwa will make the slaves avoid sins, this will make them do good deeds. This emotion will make a man purposeful. He will not lead a careless life. He now understands his purpose and keeps trying to attain it. A pious and God-fearing man will live a cautious life. He will not get lost in the luster and favors of this world. He will always be mindful of the good deeds he has done, making sure he has not made any mistakes. Has he done anything which might be accountable for? Quran has been revealed in the month of Ramadan and Alhamdulillah we are doing the Raya Quran also in the month of Ramadan and we gain taqwa by fasting also. And it is also there why should we fast? So that we may become muttaqi. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the willingness and the ability to gain taqwa in this Ramadan. Who believe in the unseen and establish the prayer and spend out of what we have provided for them. Here the attributes of the muttaqeen are mentioned. They believe in the unseen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts only that faith that you have without seeing. You have not seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have not seen paradise and hell. Still you believe in them. Therefore that belief you get after having seen the death is not accepted. Or after seeing the signs of qiyamah. If one starts to believe then it is not accepted. Which faith is accepted? Faith is the belief that you have without seeing. Belief in Allah, belief in all the religious books, belief in all the prophets, belief in angels. The meaning of establishing prayer is that they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray with humility and veneration. They pray in such a way that they have isan. Isan, what is isan in prayer? We must pray in such a way as if we are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this is not possible, then at least as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing us. Establishing prayer also means that it is not sufficient for a believer that he prays individually. But effort should be made to establish prayer in a congregational way. Next, they spend from that which we have provided. Meaning they care about others as well. They feel the pain and sorrow of others. They don't have greed or miserliness. On the contrary, they have osati qalb. 
they have the knowledge that after their death their wealth will belong to their inheritors that is why they utilize it in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during their lifetime they give it to the poor needy widows orphans and miskeen they give charity with open heart that which is in abundance they will not keep to themselves but they will distribute it because of this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower his blessings and favors upon them their wealth is safeguarded they will have blessings and prosperity in their lives and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it and give it back to them this is the promise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you must try this and see that this is the truth والذين يؤمنون بما انزل اليك وما انزل من قبلك وبالاخره هم يقينون and who believe in what has been sent down to you that is quran and what was sent down before you that is torah bible they believe in all of them another attribute of muttaqi that they have belief in all the heavenly books and all the prophets and are certain of the hereafter it is very important to have belief in the hereafter because when we are certain that we will be resurrected and we will be held accountable for each and everything only then we will prepare for the hereafter only then will our deeds get changed those who are running after this world when they understand the certainty about the hereafter they don't stop running but now it is not for this world it will not be to attain this world but they will start to gather the virtuous deeds for the hereafter after allah subhanahu wa taala has shown us the attributes of muttaqi he is saying that it is not a big deal that they are doing this ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim they are on guidance from their lord meaning they have been guided by their master they have this because of the willingness and ability bestowed by allah and guidance is a great favor what is the use wa ulaika humul muflihun and they are the ones who are successful who will attain salvation they will be completely successful this was the first group of muttaqi those who will attain salvation because what were their attributes they did not doubt the quran they were fearful of allah they believed in the unseen establishment of prayer they spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning they don't save and withhold their wealth because if they do so then there will be not any blessing and prosperity in it either it will get utilized in curing diseases or might get stolen or robbed or gets wasted in any other unlawful activity they believe in all the heavenly books and the quran meaning they believe that all of them were from allah subhanahu wa taala they believe in the hereafter only then will they be able to prepare for it i remember an account where a scholar from jews a scholar from the christians and a scholar from the muslims start giving their proofs as to who will enter paradise among the three of them who has the right to go to paradise muslim scholar said if the jews will enter paradise we will be with them because we believe in their prophets and their books and if the christians enter so will we because we believe in isa al islam and we believe in bible also but if muslims enter paradise then these two cannot enter it because they neither believe in the quran or the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam these were the attributes of the first group the people of belief the muttaqi now we must audit ourselves if we have all these attributes alhamdulillah inshallah with the ability and willingness bestowed upon us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by his help we will for sure find success in this world and in the hereafter and if we are lacking somewhere then by the ability and willingness bestowed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we may be able to overcome it we must never doubt the quran but we must read it with complete certainty that this is the book from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah what whatever rulings are coming our way we will be making a note of it and then later on look at it to see what all we have done and what all has been left out only the fear of allah should be taking the upper hand in our hearts when the fear of allah dominates then the fear of slaves will vanish if we have the fear of allah only then will we find 
proximity towards Allah. We will come forward to do good deeds. We will have accepted the will of Allah and we will find peace and satisfaction in our hearts. And we will be very cautious in trying to lead a sin-free life. And if the fear of people takes dominance over hearts, then what will happen? Then to make them happy, we will lie, we will flatter them, we will backbite. All this will happen. And inshallah, we must believe in the unseen, make our prayers in an improved way, with humility and veneration, must pray as if we are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an open heart. Because that which we are spending in the path of Allah, that is being safeguarded. And that which we have withheld will get wasted, it will not go with us. Maybe we have been saving for a long time, then that might become the cause of punishment. We have to believe in the hereafter and this belief will become apparent by the acts we do. If we are preparing for the hereafter, if we have not been unmindful of our purpose, if we have not lost ourselves in this world, then Alhamdulillah, our belief in the hereafter is certain. Now, in the fifth and the sixth ayat, other groups are being mentioned of the people of faith. This is the group of people who deny the truth. This is the group of disbelievers. It is being said, those who have disbelieved in these things, meaning they have rejected the truth, meaning they neither believed in Allah, nor Prophet وسلم, nor on the Quran. Whether you warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe, meaning they will not have faith. None of the advice that you give will affect them. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing and on their eyes there is a covering. Theirs will be a great torment. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not been unjust with them that he has put a seal on their hearts and ears. Instead, they themselves have done an injustice. Why? How? Because they did not want to accept the truth. Haqq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives without one asking. He gives blessings to everyone and to those who persevere according to their capability. However, unless they yearn or are interested and they try to acquire the truth, they will not obtain the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly gives opportunities. By rejecting the truth once, the ability to achieve success is not taken away. This tawfiq or ability is withdrawn from a person when he repeatedly sees the truth and rejects it. In Muslim, Kitabul Iman, Hadith 144, Huzaifa radiallahu anhu said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say, Temptations will be presented to men's hearts as a reed mat is woven stick by stick and any heart which is impregnated by them will have a black mark put into it. But any heart which rejects them will have a white mark put in it. The result is that there will be two types of hearts. One white, like white stone, which will not be harmed by any turmoil or temptation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our hearts like this too. In the same way, the black spotted heart, which has not accepted the truth or haqq, its spot increases to a level until the whole heart turns black, like a vessel which is upside down, not recognizing what is good or recognizing what is abominable, it becomes unaffected. Imam Ibn Jurayr Rahimahullah opinion is the same as what is declared in this hadith. When a believer commits sins, their heart impregnates a black spot. If they leave that sin and repent, then this spot will fade and their heart will be cleansed. But if they persist again and again in their sins and reject the truth or haqq, that spot also increases until the entire heart turns black. For these types of hearts, the Quran states, 
كلا بل ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكذبون نعم but that which they have earned is rust upon their hearts سورة المتففين آت نمبر 14 Allah does not do injustice upon anyone. People do injustice upon themselves. This is all because of their sinful transgressions that these black spots or marks, rust or veils have been put upon their hearts. The ability or tawfiq of acquiring the truth or haqq has been taken away from them. In the Quran, in numerous places you will find the mention of people with these characteristics. The hearts of the non-believers recognized the truth or haqq then. Again and again, they rejected the truth or haqq because of their self-interests, prejudices, stubbornness and because of their ego. This is the main reason that the tawfiq had been taken away from them. Their ears had been sealed and a veil was put upon their hearts. Now, Ayat 7 to 20 informs us about the hypocrites or munafiqeen. Initially, there were no hypocrites in Makkah. Prophet ﷺ came to Medina and there were no hypocrites there either. However, after they gained victory in the Battle of Badr and they acquired mal e ghanimat or war booty, then this third group of hypocrites came into existence. These hypocrites falsely entered Islam just for the sake of obtaining mal e ghanimat to gain worldly benefits. Their hearts were empty of faith or iman. There were also many types of hypocrites. Some were waiting to see which side the camel sits upon. And they thought if in reality the Muslims gain victory, then we will also become Muslims. And there were also those types of hypocrites who never intended to accept Islam. Hypocrisy is also a disease. And the disease of hypocrisy was causing the greatest harm to Muslims. Because they used to be amongst the Muslims by falsely uttering the kalima and stating they were Muslims, they would give wrong advice to Muslims and these hypocrites would disclose all the secrets of the Muslims to the kafirs or non-believers. Whenever they could, they would backstab the Muslims. In fact, these hypocrites were enemies in disguise but apparently they seemed like well-wishers. Their characteristics are being formed in these verses so we too can reflect upon our actions. The Quran was not just for the people or hypocrites of the past. These verses are for all people till the day of judgment. We do not know. If we also unknowingly have these characteristics of the hypocrites, so these verses are for us too. One of the main characteristics of hypocrites is to lie. So, have we to wipe these characteristics away from ourselves? We need to intend to learn, read and self-reflect that we do not inherit any of these characteristics that were found in these hypocrites. Because the consequence of the hypocrites is very bad as they will be given the lowest part of hellfire to abide in. Surah Al-Baqarah at number 8 وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And of mankind, there are some hypocrites who say, We believe in Allah on the last day, while in fact they believe not. They cheat with Allah and believers, but actually they are betraying themselves. And they are heedless to this. The hypocrites betraying themselves means that they are taking the loss of their hereafter by running towards the momentary worldly life. Their hearts are instilled with the disease of hypocrisy which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased. This is the way of Allah that He never punishes instantaneously. Allah gives time. And these hypocrites lie and for them in return it's a painful punishment. Actually, their hearts were empty of Iman. When Iman reaches and affects the heart, then lying, betrayal, conflicts, etc. All of this is eradicated from within. Whenever they were told not to start disputes on this earth, they used to say that they were the people to resolve the conflicts. Meaning, the biggest conflict is to stop the people from the worship and obedience of Allah. Hypocrites betrayed Muslims by speaking lies. They used to do this for the love of money. This was the weakness of their character. 
Be beware. In reality, these are the people who start the disputes. وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ Meaning, but they fail to perceive it. The hypocrites, for the sake of gaining inferior worldly benefits from the world or dunya, by accepting Islam falsely, they were actually destroying their hereafter. They were heedless towards their profit or loss. This is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those people who want to tread with sincerity upon the path of guidance or hidayat, those who endeavor this way, then Allah makes this path towards Jannah easy for them. Allah opens up many ways, opportunities and supports them to run towards the path of guidance that will lead towards Jannah. Those of whom who want to adopt the path of misguidance and persevere for this, they create disputes, they harm the Ahli Iman, the believing people, they bother, persecute, plot, deceive and what the hypocrites are plotting in their misguidance, Allah makes it easy for them. Allah makes the path of misguidance easy for them. And it was said to them, why don't you bring Iman like the way other people have brought Iman? And in reply, they said, Should we believe as the foolish have believed? Beware. In reality, they themselves are foolish, but they don't realize it. When these hypocrites were told to accept Islam like true believers, like the Ali Iman, then the hypocrites would say that the Ali Iman are foolish. They don't know about their profits or losses. For the sake of this deen, they have left trading and import-export. They are tying stones on their stomach because of hunger. They are very poor, financially very weak. Each time trying to teach and learn deen like fools. Their houses are falling apart. Obviously, during the migration from Mecca to Medina, they were not taking their entire family members because not all members were accepting Islam. Some were accepting, some were not. In this way, they said their family relations were getting affected. Then they said that these people are destroying their homes and leaving their blood relations. Thus, they are fools. They are killing their own fathers and brothers in the battle. Who is more foolish than them? Ayat number 14. <laughs> وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَا قُمْ إِنَّا مَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ Allah is actually mocking with them and loosening their ropes. And these hypocrites in their transgressions are stumbling blindly. Here it is being said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mocking with these hypocrites. Meaning they are receiving abundant opportunities, time. And Allah is not seizing them. And they are endeavoring to obtain the world. And they are happy on what they are acquiring in terms of abundance and money and wealth. And consider that they are doing well. Thus by saying, Ahli Iman are fools, they are blindly pursuing their transgressions. And are destroying their hereafter as already stated that they are heedless. Allahu yastahziu bihim wa yamudduhum fi tughyanihim ya'mahoon Ulaika alladheena ishtarahu al-dhalalata bilhuda Fama rabihat tijaratuhum wa ma kanu muttadeen Those are the ones who have purchased error in exchange for guidance. So their transaction has brought no profit, nor were they guided. Now, from verses 17 to 20, examples of two types of categories of hypocrites have been described. There is description of the first group of hypocrites. Add number 17. It's been said, مَثَلُهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارُ فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ زَحَبَ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتٍ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ 
Their example is that of one who kindled a fire, but when it illuminated that was around him, Allah took away their light and left them in darkness so they could not see. Deaf, dumb and blind so they will not return to the right path. The first group were hypocrites in their beliefs. In their beliefs, there were defects. They have read the kalima. They've gained a little nur or light in their hearts. Now, Prophet ﷺ started guiding those in ignorance and disbelief through the light of the Quran and Hadith. He ﷺ lit the light of guidance. The revelations of the Quran were happening. People were being told the rulings of the Quran. Now, what should be happening with this light or guidance in the hearts of those hypocrites? The light of faith should have ignited. But tragically, the outer light or guidance yet had not reached them internally. Because to gain this external light or nur, one needs to use some faculties. For example, eyes, ears and nose. But they did not do this. They closed their ears and eyes. What they heard, they ignored. When, when does this type of behavior happen? You may have experienced when some people hear the tilawa of the Quran, they start making noise. Switch this off. Who has put this tilawa on? The person who has no faith within them adopt this type of behavior. Meaning they have deficiencies in their beliefs. Therefore, the hypocrites of this group, in the love for gaining wealth, were following their desires. And like we mentioned before, these people envied, despised, were selfish towards the Prophet ﷺ. These are the reasons why in their hearts they lost the acquisition and wish of gaining faith or iman. Therefore, because of these characteristics, they had shut their eyes and ears, meaning they did not want to gain guidance. This is why they shut the doors of guidance. Yes, by uttering the kalima, a light nur of faith was ignited, but that too was extinguished. By doing this, the means of listening or seeing the truth was snatched away from them. Ayat number 19 <laughs> Or you can consider the example of these hypocrites like such that it is raining heavily from the sky, meaning the Quran is being revealed. This metaphor is about the revealing of the Quran and blessings. Alongside this darkness, there is lightning and thunder, meaning the blessings of Islam within this description of rain can be a test or trial for some people. By listening to the sizzling of lightning, they insert their fingers within their ears. And Allah Kareem has surrounded these wrongdoers. The state of these people affected by the bolts of lightning is like their sight will be snatched away from them. When a little daylight is visible, these people walk briskly. And when darkness appears, they stand. Meaning, the verses were being revealed. In these verses, when any sacrifice was to be given or the order of war or any hardship appeared, they stood ignorantly. However, when there was any benefit to be gained, they would act upon it. Verses 19 and 20 mention the other group of hypocrites. These are hypocrites in their actions. The first group were hypocrites in their beliefs. These hypocrites in actions were weak in their actions and deeds. If an easy order appeared, then they would accept it. And in their hearts, they start to accept Islam when easy deeds are given. Before, we mentioned the hypocrites would wait to see where the camel would sit. However, when a difficult order was to be followed, such as halal, haram or anything against their desires, or the order of jihad appears, that these hypocrites would become suspicious and would not act upon it. If the order of jihad were to be given, obviously this group behaved cowardly and due to the fear of dying they would insert their fingers in their ears so then they can say they did not hear any order Allah is saying but Allah is encompassing of the disbelievers meaning where can they escape 
from the fear of death. They run away from the battle. Nobody can run from death. If Allah wants, He can take their life in secure buildings. Here it is being mentioned that the example of the hypocrites in their actions are like those who are traveling in the dark night and suddenly it starts to rain heavily. Within this rain, there is lightning and thunderbolts. However, when the lightning appears, it too brings light. Hence, this group of hypocrites within this light, like travelers, also start to walk forward. But when it thunders, these travelers, due to the darkness, stand still. And fearing that lightning may strike them, they insert fingers into their ears and stand still. Nevertheless, by closing their ears, they cannot escape the grasp of Allah. Allah is all-powerful and can cast the lightning and annihilate whom He wills. Therefore, it is being stated here, those hypocrites in their actions, to escape from not carrying out their deeds, no matter how secure a building and how safe they are, even if they make smart plans, they still cannot escape from the punishment, test and tribulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The revelation of the Quran is like the rain, all types of rulings are being revealed. Let us now look at the wrongdoings of the hypocrites and we should self-reflect upon ourselves. If there is an unpleasant characteristic within us, we should try to eradicate this. Number one, they are two-sided. They lie in words and actions. They are passengers of two separate boats. And like you are aware, that passengers of two boats can never arrive at their destination. They do not have any sincerity in their faith. They are not truthful. They cannot be trusted. They are not sincere to anyone. Due to this, nobody will trust them. The disbelievers would assume they were with the Muslims. The Muslims, upon witnessing their hypocrisy, would then know the truth. These hypocrites would deceive people. They had no initiative within them. They did not understand their profit or loss and they did not recognize themselves. They thought very highly of themselves. They also had ailments in their hearts such as jealousy, malice, bitterness, enmity, hatred, lying. They would make a promise and would break it. They would cause segregation and havoc. They would devise plots, slander, and they would delude one another against each other. There is a hadith from Sahih Muslim that narrated Abdullah bin Amr, the Prophet said, whoever has the following three characteristics will be a hypocrite. And whoever has one of the following characteristics will have one characteristic of hypocrisy until he gives it up. And these are, number one, whenever he talks, he tells a lie. Number two, whenever he makes a promise, he breaks it. Number three, whenever he makes a covenant, he proves treacherous. After the mention of the types of hypocrites, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now addressing all of humanity. Ayat number 21 Ya ayyuhannasu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those before you, that you may become righteous. Here Allah's introduction has been made. If the hypocrites are to receive salvation, it is through this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating that if you want to be successful in the hereafter, then worship me alone. Do not do shirk because I am your creator, provider and owner. And adopt taqwa or God consciousness. That type of taqwa should be adopted like those nations that came before you. And the news of paradise of Jannah was given to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many blessings that have been showered upon you. Table of feasts have been laid in front of you. Rem remember this favor. Do not be ungrateful with Allah. This will then be a great injustice upon him. If one does shirk with Allah. This is why it is being said here. Ayat number 22. <laughs> فَأَقْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ 
فلا تجعل لله أندا وأنتم تعلمون. He is the one who has laid the earth like a carpet for you. He made the sky as a canopy, and he sent water down from the sky. And through this, he gave you produce from the earth as risk or food. Now that you know this, do not associate partners with Allah. Meaning, Allah has made the whole of the universe for you. Give the due to these blessings and do not do shirk and believe in Allah and only worship Him, only fear Him. Ayat number 23. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِّمَّا نَزَّلْنَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّثْلِهِ وَدِعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And if you have doubt in the Quran that Maybe it has not been revealed to you. This is because you doubt it. Hence, this is the reason why you are not following it. Then it's okay. You bring evidence. Bring one similar verse and say you have made one verse and that anyone can make it. This is not the word of Allah. Then it is being said that to all the similar thinking people, call whom you will if you are truthful. If you are truthful that this is not the word of Allah, then make and bring just one surah of verse. Ayat number 24. But if you do not, and you will never be able to, then fear the fire, whose fuel is men and stones. Prepared for the disbelievers. Ayat number 25. وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةِ الرِّزْقَةِ فَقَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي يُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَأُتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهَا وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَحَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا قَالِدُونَ O messengers, and give good tidings to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that they will have gardens in paradise, beneath which rivers flow. May Allah make us from these. Whenever they are provided with a provision of fruit therefrom, they will say, this is what we were provided with before. And it is given to them in likeness. The fruits and taste will be the same and different varieties will be available. Sometimes here on earth, we have to take seeds out from the fruit as it does not taste good. However, in Jannah, this will not be the case. There are two meanings to this verse. Number one, each time they taste a fruit, it will taste different. Number two, the fruit of Jannah will be more delicious than that of the earth. The fruits in Jannah will be easily accessible and they will have therein purified spouses and they will abide therein eternally. There will be no disease or death, nor old age, nor tiredness, nor heat, nor sweating. There will be unlimited blessings, such blessings that a human has never thought of. These blessings will be for eternity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged the disbelievers that if you say this is not the word of Allah, then bring a similar verse. When the disbelievers could not do this, they started disputing and saying, we did not even consider this the word of Allah. They would say this, if this is the word of Allah, then why is there mention of inferior things like mosquitoes and examples of insects? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is replying to their questioning. Verse number 26. Inna Allah la yastahyi an yadriba mathalam maba'ubata fama fawqah fa'amma alladhina amanu fa'ya'lamuna annahu alhaqqu min rabbihim 
وَأَمَّلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَيَقُولُونَ مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَثَلًا يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَحْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ Indeed, Allah is not shy to present an example that of a mosquito or what is smaller than it. And those who have believed know that it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they say, What did Allah intend by this as an example? He misleads many thereby and guides many thereby. And He misleads not except the defiantly disobedient. The Quran is indeed a great miracle. Now, science has found out that there is a parasite on top of the mosquito which clings to the feather of the mosquito and it takes food from the mosquito that means it is much smaller than a mosquito but it sucks the blood of a mosquito the mosquito like other creatures of Allah the Almighty is a masterpiece of his creation at several places in the Quran spiders flies gnats and so on are mentioned in order to elucidate certain points Opponents objected to this on the grounds that such objects were too lowly to find a place in the book of God. They insinuated that had the Quran indeed been a revelation from God, it would not have mentioned such trivial objects. Here, this objection is indirectly refuted. They are transgressors who do not want to believe at all. Now, in the next verse, we get to know as to who are the transgressors. Their traits are Verse 27 Who break the covenant of Allah after contracting it and sever that which Allah has ordered to be joined and cause corruption on earth. It is they who are the losers. That means whatever promises are made to Allah and his servants, they do not fulfill. And corruption is caused by not keeping promises. They neither fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor the rights of worshippers. They commit shirk. They cut off blood ties, do not care about kinship or relationships which God wants maintained on a sound basis. Verse 28 how can you disbelieve in Allah when you were lifeless he brought you to life then he will cause you to die then he will bring you back to life and then to him you will be returned man is being reminded of the fact that he was created from a small sperm and he forgot the purpose of his life, forgot the accountability on the day of judgment. Remember, you will return to Allah the Almighty, then you will have to give account. Verse 29. <laughs> It is he who created for you all that which is on the earth. Then he directed himself to the heaven, his being above all creation, and made them seven heavens, and he is knowing of all things. That means all the blessings of the heavens and the earth were created for a purpose. So how can it be that you have been created without a purpose? Allah the Almighty made all these for your service and has made you the noblest of creatures. He, Allah, made the angels prostrate, then gave you wealth of knowledge, and because of knowledge, Allah the Almighty exalted Adam a.s. Allah the Almighty had to settle Adam a.s. in the world. Allah had to be followed. Therefore, to settle the son of man on earth, Allah the Almighty put Adam through an experience. One tree was banned, the world is also a test. A few things are forbidden and everything else is halal. Similarly, they were first trained there, heaven. But like in this world, Satan was pursuing them there too. 
Adam al-Islam fell into his seduction and whispers, and Satan succeeded in feeding them that which was forbidden. But Adam al-Islam repented and then attained nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verse 30 وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ قَالُوا وَأَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي عَالَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I will make upon the earth a successive authority. They said, Would you place upon it one who causes corruption there and shed blood, while we exalt you with praise and declare your perfection? He Allah said, Indeed, I know that which you do not know. Because they knew that Adam al-Islam was being given freedom like the demons who lived in the earth, and they did a lot of bloodshed, so they thought he would do the same. Verse 31 وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَدَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And he taught Adam the names, all of them. Then he showed them to the angels and said, Inform me of the names of these if you are truthful. It is said that this was the knowledge of names. It was the knowledge of the earth. This was the first knowledge that was given to human beings. And later, the knowledge of guidance was given to mankind on earth through the prophets and divine books. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented Adam al-Islam to the angels and said, If you are right that man will do mischief on earth, then tell me the names of these things. The angels said, verse 32, قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَعِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَعَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ They said, glory to you, we have no knowledge except what you taught us. You, only you are all-knowing, all-wise. Because Allah the Almighty did not give free will and authority to the angels. They follow the will of Allah. So they are saying this. In fact, there is no one but you who knows and understands everything. Verse 33. <laughs> He said, O Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen or aspects of the heaven and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you have concealed? That means, if there are people who cause mischief and shed blood, then there will be the prophets, the martyrs and the righteous too. The virtue of knowledge is also known here that Allah the Almighty made man superior to the angels in terms of knowledge. Verse 34 وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ أَبَا وَاسْتَقْبَرُ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And mention when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. So they prostrated except for Iblis. He refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. It was a reverent prostration. It is forbidden in our Sharia. In fact, this prostration was in obedience to the command of Allah the Almighty. It was also meant to tell angels that man is the noblest of creatures. Now everything in the universe had to be arranged for the service of man. Rather, it was a responsibility of the angels. From here, the trial of human beings was starting from that day. And man's test was that what he does with these blessings. That means he recognizes the Lord, adopts monotheism or associates partners with him. 
It was also meant to see if man is arrogant like Iblis after receiving these blessings. He considers himself a great thing or serves the Lord's creatures and adopts humility. Obeys Allah the Almighty. Humans can be worse than animals. How? If he does not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be worse than animals. And if he obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and lives according to the commands that Allah the Almighty has given him, then he will be better than the angels. As has just been said, Iblis did not prostrate to Adam al Islam because of his arrogance. It was that I am better than Adam al Islam. I am made of fire and he is made of clay. He is inferior to me. In the heart of Iblis, there was jealousy and envy for Adam al Islam. Therefore, he who deliberately denies the truth becomes a disbeliever. It is narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira anhu in Abu Dawood that the Prophet wasallam said, Allah Most High said, Greatness is my garment and majestic pride is my cloak. If anyone competes with me for both of them, I will throw him into the fire. Here is a lesson for us too, that no one should be considered inferior on the basis of race, family or caste. Or if someone is poor, he should not be despised. Verse 35 <laughs> رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And we said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise and eat therefrom in ease and abundance from wherever you will. But do not approach this tree lest you be among the wrongdoers. And that was the test after all. Verse 36 فَأَزَلَّهُمَا الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَ فِيهِ وَقُلْنَا اهْبِطُوا بَعْدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ عَدُوٌّ وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حِينٍ But Satan caused them to slip out of it and remove them from that condition in which they had been. And we said, go down all of you as enemies to one another and you will have upon the earth a place of settlement and provision for a time. At that time, Adam al Islam learned a few words from his Lord. Verse 37 Then Adam received from his Lord some words and he accepted his repentance. Indeed, it is he who is the acceptor of repentance. The merciful. The words of Adam al Islam's repentance were also taught to him by Allah. That is, he had got worldly knowledge, but it could not save him. There was a need for knowledge of revelation. What was the real thing? A sense of shame. It is Allah's mercy and grace that when he saw the feeling of remorse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the gift of repentance and also taught him to pray, which is in Surah Al-Araf, verse 23. They said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be among the losers. This repentance was accepted by the Lord, for Allah is the most forgiving most merciful. Verse 38 قُلْ نَحْبِطُوا مِنْ حَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَا تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ We said, Go down from it all of you, and when guidance comes to you from me, whoever follows my guidance, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. This was the knowledge of divine revelation which was given to the prophets in the form of divine books and given according to the needs of each age. This knowledge is Sharia. There has been a different Sharia in every age. The first and last 
test on earth is to see who follows the guidance and fixes his hereafter and who is content with the development of the world only by acquiring the knowledge of the names that is the knowledge of the world and forgets guidance this is the benefit of the knowledge of guidance which is given in this verse because guidance tells a person the purpose of his life makes him know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the believing servant attains nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he then begins to follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he feels pleasure in worship and his faith grows and increase in the promises of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he trusts and believes in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he becomes contented in the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the quran also purifies his soul he learns to control his desires then there is only peace and contentment in his heart there is no fear and no sorrow may allah the almighty grant us such faith and such guidance and grant us the ability to purify ourselves amen verse 39 wal ladina kafaru wa kadhabu bi ayatina ulaika ashabun nar hum fiha qalidun and those who disbelieved and deny our signs those with the companions of the fire they will abide therein eternally may allah the almighty protect us from such an end now from verse 40 that dresses are the bani israel this is madni surah revealed in madina and bani israel also lived in madina bani means children and israel was the title of yaqub alayhi salam bani israel means the descendants of yaqub alayhi salam because israel means servant of allah israel is called a servant and il means allah in this way what is the meaning of bani israel the descendants of yaqub alayhi salam as you know prophet yaqub alayhi salam was the grandson of ibrahim alayhi salam and his father's name was ishaq who was a son of ibrahim alayhi salam and the name of ibrahim's eldest son was ismail alayhi salam who was the elder brother of hazrat ishaq alayhi salam now up to verse 46 the bani israel are being told the commandments what to do and not do verse 40 ya bani israil azkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa awfu bi ahdi wa awfu bi ahdi aw bi bi ahdikum wa iyyaya farhabun o children of israel Remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you and fulfill my covenant upon you that I will fulfill your covenant from me and be afraid of only me. This was the blessing of the prophets and the books that were revealed. The law was given to them and many kings came to Bani Israel and a long line of prophets followed. Then it is being said fulfill your promise to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's covenant with the Bani Israel was to believe in him when the last prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and helped him what will be the benefit so i will promise i will fulfill my promise to you i will reward you and give you many blessings then at the end of this verse it is being said just be afraid of me why did not the bani israel believe because they did not have the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hearts what were they afraid of they were afraid that their chieftaincy would be lost all considered them great they come to them took fatwas from them and gave them wealth they were afraid their pride will be gone and then the benefits of the world will be gone from their hands that is why they knew the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like a son but despite knowing him they did not believe because of selfishness so that the world would not be lost because the bani israel were the people of the book the polytheists used to come to them and take fatwas from them so if they believed others also would believe but when they refused the rest also did not believe verse 41 wa aminu bima anzaltum mufaddiqan lima ma'akum 
ولا تكونوا أول كافر به ولا تشتروا بآياتي ثمنا قليلا وإياي فاتقون I believe in what I have sent down confirming that which is already with you and be not the first to disbelieve in it and do not exchange and be not the first to disbelieve in it and do not exchange my signs for a small price and fear only me because the denial of bani israel was the denial of the first group of the people of the book that is why they have been called the first infidel they had knowledge that others did not have everyone obeyed them allah almighty says do not disbelieve in my verses and do not disbelieve in my messenger peace and blessings of allah be upon him rather believe confirm and help my messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this way you will get the whole world and you will prosper in the hereafter and this world is very little compared to the hereafter all this is contained in these books It is narrated on the authority of Abu Daud that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever learns this knowledge by which Allah is pleased in order to get worldly benefits he will not even find the fragrance of paradise on the day of resurrection that means we must learn the knowledge of religion in order to please Allah it is permissible to take wages without fixing the fee for teaching knowledge Similarly it is permissible for scholars who teach knowledge to take from the treasury so that they can be happy and meet their needs if they will not get some money from the treasury how will they earn a living they will have to do some business if they are doing something apart from teaching knowledge then it's okay but if they don't have time to do any business because of teaching knowledge then it is also permissible to set wages this is what imam malik imam shafi and imam ahmad may allah have mercy upon him said and they take the evidence from this hadith which is in sahih bukhari according to the narration of hazrat abu said al khudri he fixed the wage and blew the quranic verses on a person bitten by a snake when the story was presented to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most deserving of all that you earn The second hadith is that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam arranged the marriage of a man to a woman and said I am giving her to you as a wife and teach her of the Quran which you learned as a dowry. Verse 42 Wala talbisul haqqa bil batil wa taqtumul haqqa wa antum ta'lamun and do not mix the truth with falsehood. or conceal the truth while you know it what is meant by truth here is the prophethood of sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the message he brought it is being said that if you deny the truth then you are only inviting the wrath don't do that but verse 43 wa aqimus salata wa atuz zakata wa qaw ma allah qiin and establish prayer and give zakah and bow with those who bow in worship and obedience that means those who pray together with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you should also pray with them verse 44 atamuruna an-nasa bil bidhi wa tasawna anfusakum wa antum tatluna al-kitab afala taqilun do you order righteousness of the people and forget yourselves while you recite the scripture Then will you not reason? Here, the Jewish scholars are being called. Do not, do you not use your intellect? The Bani Israel were also commanded to pray and pay zakat. They had stopped praying in congregation. Here, they are being ordered. Jewish scholars, in particular, are being told that you forget yourselves and admonish others. You do not act on your own. Keep the promises you made to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. if you do everyone else will believe and believe in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam believe in the quran verse 45 wasta'inu bis-sabri was-salah wa innaha lakabiratun illa 'ala al-khashi'in and seek help through patience and prayer and indeed it is difficult except for the humbly submissive to allah here 
Bani Israel are being advised to be patient and observe prayers. Only when their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes strong, they will worry about their end and life in the grave. And when they begin to prepare for it, they will realize that they have to believe in their Prophet and accept the truth that is Islam that he has been sent with. Patience is self-control. It is endurance. You are asked to keep a check on yourself. It's called self-restraint. Here the Quran tells the Bani Israel to restrain themselves from the love of worldly things because they were running after the pleasures of the world and didn't care about halal or haram. It was this love of the world that drove the Bani Israel away from the truth. They did not have faith in Allah and did not believe that one day this world would end. Verse 46 Indeed, it is difficult except for the humbly submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, those who think without any doubt that in the end they will meet their Lord and to Him they must return. Here, patience is the key word because no good deed is done without patience. Prayers can be performed only if one is patient. Charity can only be done with patience. Faith also comes to man only when there is patience in him. Bear that we will eat little but we will eat halal. Why do we sell the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and eat haram? This is called patience. Therefore to have faith also requires patience and endurance. And then they, here it is being said that after all, they have to meet their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and return to Him. It means they will have believed if they had realized that they are accountable to their Lord after their death. They have to go back to their Lord. Then what will they answer Him? Now in verses 47 to 74, the 11 rewards that were given to the children of Israel are mentioned. The six torments that befell them are also mentioned. Twelve moral and practical diseases that were within them are also mentioned. These were the people of the book before us. Now we are the people of the book, Al-Quran. We have to see what happened to them. Why did they end up? Obviously it was because of their evil deeds. Somewhere are we not doing the same? Verse 47 Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fadwaltukum ala al-alameen. O children of Israel, remember my favor that I have bestowed upon you and that I preferred you over the worlds. That means he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, chose you for leadership, chose for you the kingdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed innumerable blessings on the children of Israel, which will be mentioned later in Surah Baqarah. Verse 48 And fear a day when no soul will suffice for another soul at all nor will intercession be accepted from it, nor will compensation be taken from it, nor will they be aided. It is being said that the day of judgment is very severe. Remember that. Be afraid. Think about it. Get out of negligence. Do something for that day too. Because that day will be so hard that no recommendation, no bribe, no redemption will work on that day. Here, in this world, wealth and people in positions of power are wrongly used to recommend and to influence judgments in courts of law. People are also prepared to give false testimony. But there, on the day of judgment, these things can never happen. Here, it, here is advice for us too. What do we say? We are the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. He will intercede for us. He will save us. People also visit graves of saints to plead to them to intercede on their behalf. Some even approach saints and other elders whom they regard as righteous for intercession on the Day of Judgment. They say there is no need to fast or pray. 
Let us just rejoice and please our saints and elders who will take care of everything. Now, the kindnesses that were done to the children of Israel are being mentioned. Verse 49. وَإِذْ نَجَّيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ and recall, when we saved you, that is your forefathers from the people of Pharaoh who afflicted you with the worst torment, slaughtering your newborn sons and keeping your females alive. And in that was a great trial from your Lord. Because Pharaoh slaughtered their sons and left their daughters alive. It was also a great ordeal. Thus the Pharaohs used to make these daughters their slaves. They used to take service from them as they wished. And these women had no male guardians to protect them. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning another favor done to the children of Israel. Verse number 50. وَإِذْ فَرَقَنَا بِكُمُ الْبَحْرَ فَأَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ وَأَغْرَقَنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَا وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And recall when we parted the sea for you and saved you and drowned the people of Pharaoh while you were looking on. That means when they were sinking, you were watching. In Masnad Ahmad, there is this hadith. When the Messenger of Allah came to Medina, he saw that the Jews were used to fasting on the day of Ashura. He asked, why do you fast on this day? They said that because on that blessed day, the children of Israel were saved from the tyranny of Pharaoh and their enemy was drowned. As a gesture of gratitude, Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, observed this fast. The Prophet said, We have a greater right over Musa, peace be upon him, than you. So the Holy Prophet fasted that day and ordered the people to fast as well. It is said that Pharaoh was told by an astrologer that there was a boy from Bani Israel who will destroy his kingdom. That's why Pharaoh began to slaughter the sons of Bani Israel. And then it was the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the boy from Bani Israel who was to destroy the kingdom of Pharaoh was taken to Pharaoh's house by Pharaoh himself. He grew up in his house. Here Allah the Almighty is reminding the Bani Israel of his bounty. It was a very great ordeal that they had to face. Their newborn children, their beloved sons, were separated from them. And they were slaughtered. Pharaoh made the Bani Israel his slaves and made them do a lot of hard work. Their blood was shed mercilessly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his infinite mercy saved them from these atrocities. It was their turn now to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this favor and believe in him. Verse 51 <laughs> And recall when we made an appointment with Musa for 40 nights, then you took for worship the calf after him, that is his departure, while you were wrongdoers. Allah Almighty had taken a promise from Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, that he should come to the Mount Tur and observe Itikaf for 40 days. Then he would be given the Torah. Therefore, Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, went to Mount Tur and taking advantage of his absence, a magician by the name of Samari, made a calf. And he said to the Bani Israel, Make him your God. And they became ready to worship the calf. Not all of them, but many people started doing shirk. In spite of this shirk, shirk is oppression, Allah Almighty bestowed another favor on them. That was verse 52. ثُمَّ عَفَوْنَ أَنْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Then after that we forgave you so that you might be grateful. The Bani Israel who lived in Egypt with the Pharaoh and his people brought with them such beliefs and love in their hearts. The people of Pharaoh worshipped the cow and the love of the cow was ingrained in their, that is the Bani Israel's hearts too. Verse 53 وَإِذْ آتَيْنَ مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْقَانَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ 
and recall when we gave Musa the scripture and the criterion that perhaps you would be guided. That means Allah Almighty was doing them a favor and they were associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verse 54 وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ بِإِتِّقَاذِكُمُ الْعِجْلَ فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَارِئِكُمْ فَقَتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ بَارِئِكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ and recall, when Moses said, said to his people, O oh my people, indeed, you have wronged yourselves by your taking of the calf for worship. So repent to your creator and kill yourselves. That is the guilty among you. That is best for all of you in the sight of your creator. Then he accepted your repentance. Indeed, he is the acceptor of repentance, the merciful. That means, kill those who have committed shirk and those who forbade polytheism or shirk have been forgiven and those who did not will be forgiven on condition that they kill their relatives with their own hands those who had committed shirk and they had not forbidden them earlier you see evil happening oppression is happening somewhere rights are being lost injustice is happening someone is killing someone someone is oppressing someone and you remain a silent spectator the new are just as sinful as the wrongdoer who is sinning at that moment. It is very important to stop it, to stop it by hand. If it cannot be done, then it should be stopped with the tongue. If that cannot be done, then it should be stopped with the tongue. Nowadays, people see that there is oppression happening somewhere. Instead of helping the oppressed, what do they do? Start making videos. May Allah Almighty guide them. It is being said that this is better for you in the sight of your creator. In this way, your forgiveness will be accepted. At that time, your creator accepted your repentance. How was repentance accepted? 70,000 people were killed and obviously the same number of people killed them. Surely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the acceptor of repentance most merciful. Verse 55 وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَن نُؤْمِنَا لَكَ حَتَّى نَرَى اللَّهَ جَحْرَةً فَأَقَذَتْكُمُ الصَّاعِقَةُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَنْظُرُونَ And recall when you said, O oh Moses, we will never believe you until we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outright. So the thunderbolt took you while you were looking on. This was extreme arrogance of the Jews and reason for not obeying was that they could change the commandments and do as they please. They were asked to tell people that no, this command was also given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We heard it ourselves. When Moses, peace be upon him, returned from Mount Tur with the Torah and presented the Torah to the nation, the people began to say, how can we believe that this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, was disturbed by this. Allah the Almighty said, Bring 70 men with you on Mount Tur. Thus, Moses, peace be upon him, chose 70 respected men of his nation and he took them with him to Mount Tur. There, they heard that Allah Almighty was speaking to Moses. They said, how can we believe that it is the word of God? It is the voice of God. They said, we will believe only when we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, Prophet Moses, all this and giving you orders. What happened when the people asked to see Allah Almighty in front of them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, At that moment, as soon as you saw it, a great thunderbolt struck you. You were watching each other fall and die. You had fallen unconscious. You were dying, but before you died, Allah Almighty had power to show each other falling and dying. Everyone was looking at each other. Allah Almighty is telling us of His bounty, that He has been bountiful, bountiful to us again. Verse 56 Then we revived you after your death, that perhaps you would be grateful. It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did many favors, but you were ungrateful every time. But Allah Almighty went on doing good. Now another kindness is being mentioned, verse 
And we shaded you with clouds and sent down to you manna and quails, saying, Eat from the good things with which we have provided you. And they wronged us not, but they were only wronging themselves. It was very hot in the desert. Allah the Almighty made a shadow of the clouds. Wherever they went, the cloud also went along. Then Allah the Almighty provided them with food to eat. How they wronged themselves? By disobeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by forgetting their purpose. They did not believe in Allah Almighty. They used to doubt. And why did they do that? So that they could do with their heart's desire. Verse 58 وَإِذْ قُلْنَا ادْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدًا وَادْخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاكُمْ وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And recall when we said, Enter the city, that is Jerusalem, and eat from it wherever you will, in ease and abundance. And enter the gate bowing humbly and say, Relieve us of our burdens, that is sins. We will then forgive your sins for you and we will increase the doers of good in goodness and reward. It is said that they were trained for such a long time. After that, with the help of all Allah the Almighty, they conquered the town. They were told to enter the city while prostrating before Allah Almighty. Relieve us of our burdens. It has two meanings. To enter with humility and submission, seeking forgiveness from Allah the Almighty. Pray for forgiveness yourself and forgive those too who you overcome. Don't start killing because when you forgive them, Allah the Almighty will forgive your shortcomings and your sins and will give you more blessings, will give you grace, will give you rewards. The Messenger of Allah did the same during the conquest of Makkah. And today when the Taliban have recaptured their own country, Afghanistan, they have done the same. It is in Sahih Bukhari, Hazrat Ibn Abbas anhu, had stated this in front of Hazrat Umar anhu, that when Prophet entered the city after the conquest of the Makkah, signs of extreme humility and submission were evident on him. He وسلم, bowed his head so much that his chin touched the back of the camel which he had mounted. As he, soon as he وسلم, entered the city, he وسلم, performed ghusl and then performed eight rakahs of duha. It was an expression of gratitude for the conquest of Makkah. Here is a lesson for us too. Whenever we have success, we should not be arrogant. We must be humble. Nawafil should be offered, charity should be paid. We must run for more good deeds. We should give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ But those wronged changed those words to a statement other than that which had been said to them. So we send down upon those wronged a punishment that is plague from the sky because they were defiantly disobeying. They were asked to enter the city asking forgiveness. The oppressors changed these words to something else which meant we need wheat. Allah had arranged halal and nutritious food for them in the form of something sweet that fell from the sky like dewdrops, manna and quails, salva were there with it but they were thankless. They wanted to spend all their time growing wheat, grinding it and making bread. It is said plague was sent down and this was the punishment for their disobedience. Verse 60 <laughs> Allah 
and recall when Moses prayed for water for his people. So we said, Strike with your staff. And there gushed forth from it twelve springs, and every people that its tribe knew its watering place. Eat and drink from the provision of Allah, and do not commit abuse on the earth, spreading corruption. Remember, when Moses, peace be upon him, prayed for water for his people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We said, Strike the rock with your stick. Twelve rivers gushed out of it, because they had twelve tribes, so that they would not quarrel among themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took out twelve rivers, and each tribe knew from where to take water. That time, it was instructed to eat and drink from the food of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to spread corruption in the land. That means not to be extravagant, not to be ungrateful, not to disobey the commands, or not to make fun of religion and not to change the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verse 61. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَن نَّصْبِرَ لَن نَّصْبِرَ عَلَى طَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ فَادْعُوا لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا مِمَّا تُنبِتُ الْأَرْضُ مِن بَقْلِهَا وَقِثَّائِهَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَدَسِهَا وَبَصَلِهِ قَالَ أَتَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرٌ اِحْبِطُوا مِصْرًا فَإِنَّ لَكُمْ مَا سَأَلْتُمْ وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الظِّلَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَةُ وَبَاءُوا بِغَضَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ بِمَا اَعْصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ and recall when you said, O Musa, we can never endure one kind of food. So call upon your Lord to bring forth from us, from the earth, its green herbs and its cucumbers and its garlic and its lentils and its onions. Musa said, Would you exchange what is better for what is less? Go into any settlement and indeed you will have what you have asked. And they were covered with humiliation and poverty and returned with the anger from Allah upon them. That was because they repeatedly disbelieved in the signs of Allah and killed the prophets without right. That was because they disobeyed and were habitually transgressing. Have you forgotten the purpose for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you? Will you follow the tastes, stop reaping the blessings? The greatest blessing is the blessing of guidance. Well, go to any urban population. Everything you ask for will be found there. Even today, we forget our duties and purpose of life and keep on indulging in tastes what will be cooked now. When one meal is made, we get worried about the next. It is said that at last the time came when humiliation, selfishness, inferiority and misery prevailed over them. And they fell into the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and killed the messengers unjustly. This was the consequence of their disobedience. And the fact was that they went beyond the limits. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, The meaning of arrogance is to conceal the truth and despise people. In Masnad Ahmad, Malik ibn Murara one day came to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ and said, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ, I am a beautiful man. I do not want anyone's shoe strap to be better than mine. So is this arrogance and rebellion? The Prophet ﷺ said, No, rather arrogance and rebellion is to reject the truth and despise the people. In Masnad Ahmad, Hazrat Abdullah bin Mas'ud says, The Bani Israel used to kill number of prophets. Then they would go to the markets and engage in their transactions. That means the Bani Israel were arrogant, denied the truth and disbelieved. They used to kill the prophets. They used to go out of the land and break the boundaries of Allah. That's why the wrath of Allah descended upon them in this world as well as in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such evils so that we do not have the same fate as them. Believe me, one who believes in the Arab prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or one who is a Jew or a Christian or a Sabi or astrologer who lived in Iraq, 
who were followers of Ibrahim السلام, who were believes, believers in Allah and the last day and does good deeds his reward is with his Lord and there is no fear for him in fact Jews and Christians used to say وَقَالِتِ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَ نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاءُهُ And Jews and the Christians say, We are the sons of Allah and His beloved ones. Here their words are being rejected. They also used to say that we are the children of the prophets. And Christians used to say that they are the Ummah of Prophet Isa a.s. the son of Allah. And according to their belief, they used to say Isa a.s. He crucified for us. So we will go to heaven now. Verse 62 <laughs> فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Indeed, those who believed and those who were Jews or Christians or Sabians before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those among them who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day and did righteousness will have their reward with their Lord and no fear will there be concerning them. Nor will they grieve. Here Allah the Almighty is saying that this will not happen at all. One who will believe in Allah and will believe in the hereafter. Because obviously if he will believe in the day of judgment, then only he will act. The ones who will be afraid of accountability and will do good deeds, only he will be saved. That means these kinship, relationships and the way it happens here like people getting recommendations or pleading on someone's behalf, it is being said that all these things will not work that day. Salvation will depend on faith and good deeds. This ayat is meant for people when Prophet Muhammad had not come yet. So before that, if they believed in their Prophet, they followed their book, it is being said that because of these good deeds and faith, they will be saved. It will not be seen who has more wealth, who is beautiful, who has more talent and intelligence and who has more relationships with people. Verse 63 <laughs> And recall, when we took your covenant, O Bani Israel, to abide by Torah, and we raised over, the, over you the mount, saying, Take what we have given you with determination, and remember what is in it, that perhaps you may become righteous. That means Allah the Almighty gave many blessings to Bani Israel. They always disobeyed. Allah the Almighty kept forgiving them, kept telling them the purpose of life. Then kept giving them blessings. They continued to disobey again. Eventually, Allah the Almighty lifted up Mount Tur and imposed it on their heads. And then said, take your book and follow it. This is what we are doing today. We too must hold on to the Quran strongly. And that's not the way to hold it. That hold on and let the bride pass under it. Or just when someone dies at home, only then should it be taken out and read. Or when someone gets sick, it should be opened. No, we have to strengthen our relationship with it. Of course, we have to read it daily. But it also has to be read with the correct intention. With Tajweed. Inshallah, we have to remember its translation. Because there will be questions about it. It is obligatory to acquire knowledge of it. And we have to understand it from the point of view of interpretation. And then we have to act upon it. And inshallah, with the help of Allah, it is to be conveyed to others as well. Verse 64 
Then you turned away after that. And if not for the favor of Allah upon you and His mercy, you would have been among the losers. Allah the Almighty says, After this covenant, you turned away from your covenant. The grace of Allah and His mercy did not leave you, otherwise you would have been destroyed. Verse 65 وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُ قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ And you had already known about those who transgressed among you concerning the Sabbath. And we said to them, Be apes despised. You know the story of those people of your nation who broke the law of Sabbath. The law of Sabbath was that the day of worship for Bani Israel was Saturday, as ours is Friday. We can do business after Friday prayer, right? But the Bani Israel were not allowed to do business on Saturday. They were only allowed to worship and rest. But they started plotting. The trick was that they lived on the beach. So the fishermen would leave their nest, nets in the sea on Friday. And their second trick was that they built drains. This was their test. On Saturday, fish also jumped more than on normal days and a lot would accumulate in the drains and in the nets which they had already laid. That's why they used to say, we are following the commands of Allah. Look at Saturday. No, we are not working and not doing business. We are just worshipping and doing rest. But the fish were well gathered and they used to take them out on Sunday. They were punished in this way that Allah the Almighty is saying that we told them to become monkeys and be in a state that you would be attacked and rebuked from all sides. That means this is the fate of those who played with the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that they would have formed three groups. One group committed this sin. The other group did not forbid them. And the third group forbade it. Those who forbid were the ones who benefit. They received no punishment. But there were two groups, the one who committed the crime and the other who did not forbid it. It was a silent spectator. Both were turned into monkeys. Verse 66 And we made it a deterrent punishment for those who were present and those who succeeded them and a lesson for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the Bani Israel is facing another test. They said, now we are in Tawheed. But Allah the Almighty commanded them to slaughter the cow. This order showed that the love of the cow is still ingrained in their hearts. Here is the same story of the cow, due to which the name of this surah is Baqara. Verse 67 وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَةً قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And recall when Musa said to his people, Indeed, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow. They said, Do you take us in ridicule? He said, I seek refuge in Allah from being among the ignorant. Allah the Almighty created a situation first and then ordered them to slaughter the cow. It happened something like this that a rich man was killed in Bani Israel, who was killed by his nephews in the forest, who then threw his dead body outside of a house in the dark night, so the blame will be on those who lived in that house. Thus nothing was known about the killer. Allah the Almighty revealed to Musa al -Islam, order this nation to slaughter a cow, then hit a piece of flesh on the body of the victim. Then the victim will be alive and will also tell the name of the killer. Here, their belief in life after death, which was very weak, also had to be strengthened. Let's see how Allah the Almighty raised a dead person in this world in the same way He, Allah the Almighty, will raise you up from the graves. The second was to take out the love of the cow from their hearts. Here Musa al Islam is saying, Why should I make fun? Am I ignorant? Because the Prophet is purposeful. He never jokes. His message, his words should be considered 
as a message of Allah, a command from Allah, and should be accepted immediately without any argument and asking too many questions, it should be accepted. The injunctions of religion are still ridiculed today. Those who preach the religion are ridiculed. Women's veils and hijabs are ridiculed. The same goes for men's beards. And various people have made jokes about the clerics, the angels, heaven and hell, and then the sacrificial animals, even though all these are the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should be respected. Verse 68. قَالَ ادْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيَّنْ لَنَا مَا هِي قَالَ أَإِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَ بَقَرَةٌ لَا فَارِدٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ أَعْوَانٌ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ فَفَعَلُوا مَا تُؤْمَرُونَ They said, call upon the Lord to make clear to us what it is. Musa said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is a cow which is neither old nor virgin, but median between that. So do what you are commanded. Then they began to say, verse 69, قَالُوا دِعُوا لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيِّنْ لَنَا مَا لَوْنُهَا قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ صَفْرَا فَاكِئٌ لَوْنُهَا تَصُرُّ النَّاظِرِينَ They said, call upon your Lord to show us what is her color. He said, he says it is a yellow cow, bright in color, pleasing to the observers. They were increasing as many questions as they could. It was becoming more difficult for them to find such a cow. Verse 70. <laughs> They said, call upon your Lord to make clear to us what it is. Indeed, all cows look alike to us. And indeed, we, if Allah wills, will be guided. Muhammad said, if they had not said, if Allah wills, they would not have got this cow till the day of resurrection. Verse 71. <laughs> مُسَلَّمَةٌ لَا شِيَةَ فِيهَا قَالُوا الْآنَ جِئْتَ بِالْحَقِّ فَزَبَحُوهَا وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ He said, It is a cow neither trained to plough the earth nor to irrigate the field, one free from fault with no spot upon her. They said, Now you have come with the truth. So they slaughtered her but could hardly do it. Because the love of the cow was ingrained in their hearts. They did not want to slaughter the cow at all. If they had done it in the beginning, instead of asking a lot of questions, they could easily slaughter any cow. Due to frequent questioning of what happened now, the sanctions continued to grow. So in the end, there was only one cow, as Allah the Almighty had said. Golden, spotless and young, and such cows they used to choose for worship. And the man who had that cow, when he came to know, that it was so important, he also asked for its price generously. And he said the price that after the cow was slaughtered, the amount of gold in its skin will be the same as its price. This made the cow very expensive for them. And this punishment was given to them because of many questions, because of the love of the cow in their hearts. There was love in their heart, that's why excuses were being made. Therefore, there is a lesson for us too. That when any command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, we should act upon it immediately. And don't ask too many questions about religion. Verse 72 And recall, when you slew a man and disputed over it, but Allah was to bring out that which you were concealing. Verse 73 فَقُلْنَا نَرِبُهُ بِبَعْدِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So we said, strike him, that is a slain man, with part of it. Thus, does Allah bring the dead to life and he shows you his signs that you might reason. The dead man was resurrected for a while. He named the killer and then died. Verse 74 
ثم قست قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قصوة وإن من الحجارة لما يتفجر منه الأنهار وإن منها لما يشقق فيخرج منه الماء وإن منها لما يحبث من خشية الله وما الله بغافل عما تعملون Then your hearts became hardened after that being like stones or even harder for indeed there are stones from which rivers burst forth and there are some of them that split open and water comes out and there are some of them that fall down for fear of Allah and Allah is not unaware of what you do let's find out why hearts are hard when we are oblivious to the hereafter don't know the purpose of life lost in the colors of the world that is why there is no time to read the quran or to learn understand and obey allah the almighty's commands obviously when they do not learn and do not act upon there is neither desire nor passion then what do they do they sin break the boundaries of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because disobeying the orders is breaking boundaries they eat haram all these make the heart hard hardness of hearts leads to misery we should pray for the softening of hearts if there are no tears in the human eyes do not take part wholeheartedly in the quranic assembly do not want to hear the truth there will be greed and covetousness of the world if there are long longings then it should be understood that the heart has hardened we must keep examining our hearts if we do not soften our hearts what will be the harm if we do not take out the hardness of hearts then accidents and trials will come and soften the hearts shall we not soften our hearts will we wait for these accidents and trials may our hearts be softened before they come what to do if we want allah the almighty to protect us from suffering from troubles and diseases we have to strengthen our relationship with the quran it will bring us closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and quran softens the hearts may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of success ameen now in verses 75 to 82 are mentioned the present bani israel and their various classes the jewish scholars are mentioned that a group of them the jewish scholars used to distort their books before the quran because they did not fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all because of the hardness of their hearts that is why muslims are being told verse 75 afatatma'una an yu'minu lakum wa qad kana fariqun minhum yasma'una kalam allah ثم يحرفونه من بعد ما اقلوه وهم يعلمون do you covet the hope of believers that they would believe for you while a party of them used to hear the words of allah and then distort it that is the torah after they had understood it while they were knowing here allah the almighty is saying to the simple and new muslims of medina that the jews have told you this many times that a last prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is coming and those who support this last prophet will spread all over the world now those who heard it they bring faith but the jews did not do it by themselves they began to make changes in the torah they started plotting then what did they do they also distorted it and then said to those who believed look we are not believing because what belongs to the last prophet in the torah does not belong to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَا بَعْدُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْدٍ قَالُوا أَتُحَدِّثُونَهُمْ بِمَا فَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ لِيُحَاجُّوكُمْ بِهِ عِنْدَ رَبِّكُمْ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ and when they meet those who believe they say we have believed but when they are alone with one another they say do you talk to them about what allah has revealed to you so they can argue with you about it before your lord then will you not reason in fact the signs of the last prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that were present in the torah were exactly found in the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so some 
hypocritical Jews would come to the Muslims and tell them that we are Muslims and then they would also tell them these predictions. These are the signs of Prophet Sallallahu written in our Torah which are present in him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when it came to the Jewish scholars, they would say to them, what are you doing? Why do you tell them the predictions of Torah? On the day of resurrection, they will testify against us. Then we will have no answer. The Jewish scholars thought that only by telling the Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know on the day of judgment. Otherwise, he, Allah, would not know. So they forbade the hypocritical Jews and said, look, don't tell them all that is in our book. Otherwise, the Muslims will establish an argument against you on the day of resurrection and will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they had full knowledge about the last Prophet sallallahu They used to tell us that everything is written in their book. So why did they not believe? Verse 77 But do they not know that Allah knows what they conceal and what they declare? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, what is in the Torah and what is not, do I not know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knowing. If they have distorted the Torah, he has complete knowledge of it. Allah the Almighty knows the unseen. No one can reach the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only the stupidity of Jews is mentioned here. They thought that if they hid these signs of the Prophet's prophethood from the Muslims, they might be able to hide it from Allah. While this is not the case, Allah the Almighty knows everything from eternity. Alhamdulillah, our half para is done. Tomorrow we will learn more about these groups of Bani Israel from verse 78. May Allah the Almighty, as much we have read about them, about the Jews, the hypocrites, whatever their characteristics are, give us the best guidance to see if some of them are inside us. If so, may Allah the Almighty help us to reform ourselves first. We change ourselves. If Allah wills, this Quran alone will purify our souls, will improve us. When we are reformed, then if Allah wills, it will be easier for us to teach others by our actions and whatever Allah wills. We will explain these commands to them if Allah wills. May Allah accept your listening. Bring a lot of blessings into your lives. Your worship, fasting, recitation of the Quran, giving of charity, all your virtues, all your acts of worship, may Allah the Almighty accept them in the best way and grant us a great reward and health and well-being. Ameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawwabur rahim. Our Lord, accept from us our good deeds. Verily, you are the all-hearing and the all-knowing. And accept our repentance, for you alone are the acceptor of repentance, the dispenser of mercy. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Glory be to Allah, who Allah, while praising you, we bear witness that there is no God except you. We seek your forgiveness and we repent to you. Ameen.